Hey everyone and welcome to VFXY once again. So in today's video, we are going to see how we can replace any screen. In this particular case, we are going to see how we can replace mobile screen, but the process will be same if you want to replace any kind of screen. So yes, the workflow will be, we are going to track our screen inside Mocha and later on we are going to export that data to Nuke and we are going to replace our mobile screen. So without wasting any time, let's start the topic. Okay, as you can see over here, I have my footage imported inside Mocha and only thing I have changed is my frame rate. Earlier, by default, Mocha gives you a 24 frame per second, but my footage was 25 frame per second. That's why I have to change it. Rest the setting is by default. And as I can see over here, I am having a good amount of movement in my camera and I'm going to frame number zero and I'm going to draw a shape around my mobile, something like that. And I think I need to adjust a little, something like that. I'm going to draw my shape somewhat bigger than my mobile so that I can target all the details inside the mobile. I think this shape uh, will work for me. And after drawing my shape, only thing I'm going to change over here in setting is perspective. If any kind of perspective is shifting in my footage. Rest, I'm going to hit track forward from current frame and it will take some time as this footage is USD 4K. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fast forward this uh, tracking and I'll come back once it's done. Okay, so my tracking has been done and I will go and will cross check if it's sliding or not. So I think it's not sliding is going perfect with my camera track or perfect with my tracking. So after that, what I'll do, I'm going over here and I can set my surface plane and I will switch on my show planar grid so that I can set my uh, planar grid and all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to little zoom in to my footage so that I can place it accordingly and I'm going over here and see here I am not having any kind of corner. So what I'll do, I will try to match this line and this line. So I think it will work for me and I'm going to hold on Z and right click and what will happen? My viewer will fit and once I'm going to play it, as you can see over here, it's going with my uh, track data and I think tracking is good. I think we should go ahead and I'm going over here and export track. I'll, I'm going to click on export track and here I can select new corner pin. If I want to save, I can save it. If I want to copy to clipboard, I can uh, directly copy to clipboard and directly we can jump to nuke. Okay, so as you can see over here, my footage is already inside Nuke and I have my insert as well. So insert is of different resolution and it's moving because it's a uh, motion graphics kind of stuff. So uh, we'll come to uh, that footage later. So what I'm going to do, if you remember, I have copied my data to clipboard and just I have to do uh, control V. So my corner pin is over here. So uh, if I'm going to directly use my corner pin to my uh, insert, so what will happen? The resolution won't match. So if I'm going to take a merge node and I'm going to uh, do something like that, merge A over B. But what will happen if you are going to see that my corners are not, not matching that great, right? So what I can do, I can either key out my footage like I'm going to take a keyer node or key light probably and I'm going to take my key light and quickly I'm going to key it out. So I'm going to see this, I'm going to check this and I'm probably I am going to uh, do something like that. Let's gamma down and I'm getting something. So probably I can fix it. I'm not going to spend much time on this and probably it will work for me. And if I'm going to switch my inputs A over B, what will happen? My edges will be fixed, but my resolution is not that great, right? 
as you know anything is coming from b input the comp resolution automatically will be from b input of merge so how we can fix it so i'm going to take a node called reformat and i'm going to uh, connect it and hopefully it will be fixed but so as you can see it's not the way we want because everything is straight so what we need to do just you need to change the resize type to distort so what will happen automatically it will uh, be fixed and just it's a little trick if you want to do something like that you need to change the reformat and you should use resize type distort right so as you can see over here my everything is fixed my corners are fixed as you can see over here my corners are fixed because i'm using my mgfx as a background and uh, my main footage as a foreground but main problem is i'm getting my this track marker so how we can fix it either you can fix it by uh, doing roto over here you you have to uh, animate it frame by frame not frame by frame but you have to animate it but here mocha comes in a very handy way so I'm going to mocha one more time and I'm going to frame number first and I'm going to draw a rough garbage shape. So I'm going over here on first frame and might be I can uh, zoom it a little. Okay, my garbage shape is done. It's not necessary or it's, it's not mandatory to do a bilkul perfect uh, tracking. So what else we can do? But as I'm going to scrub my timeline, it's not going with the track. So what we need to do, well, it's, it's recommended just you have to rename it. So my first layer is my track layer and my second layer is my garbage mat. I can rename it. So it, it's a garbage mat. So what else we need to do here? in se select your garbage mat and here we have an option called link to track so i'm going to link with my tracking data and if i'm going to scrub it my mask is going with my tracking right okay so after doing that what we have to do just select your garbage mat and just you need to go to export shape this time so i'm going to click on export shape and here you have to select new roto basic right again same way if you want to save that data you can save it or you can just copy to clipboard and again i'm going to jump to nuke and just i have to hit control v so your mat will come something like that and how you can use my mat just take a, a merge node over here and just connect it and i'm going to use stencil so as i'm going to use a stencil it will be my tracking markers will be eliminated and i don't have to worry about animation right because i am exporting my mat data on the basis of track data and if i'm going to see my final output and as you can see over here it's working pretty fine right so this is the basic thing you can uh, think of and you can use these small small technique to enhance your comp work and as you can see over here on first frame i am not having much light detail but if i'm going to last frame we are having some sort of uh, a light detail over here so how we can do that just you need to take a, a roto shape node and i'm going to draw a roto shape around my edges as per my requirement and i'm going to hit a z and might be e just to give some smoothness and now i can go and i can animate it as per my requirement if you want you can use your tracking data just to do that but for this case i'm not going to do that because after 50 before 50 number frame i don't have any kind of a light movement so i'm going to take a grade node and in grade node i'm going to connect this uh, roto as a mask and probably on last frame i'm going to fix my this thing or probably on first number frame i'm going to animate my gain and gamma and i'm going to last number frame and probably i can fix a little gain and probably some gamma as well not that much and i'm going to take a blur node as well just to soften my edges more and if i can see i am having a good amount of light hint over here right so by doing this much only i'm going to play it on the half resolution and if i'm going to play it it will take some time and it will play accordingly 
So as you can see over here, my screen has been replaced. I have used my Mocha tracking data to mask anything, to garbage mask anything. And we have changed our screen inside Nuke. So hopefully this technique uh, is pretty interesting and I'm hoping that this will help you to understand Mocha to Nuke workflow in a better way. And if you're thinking that this video is helping you, Please don't forget to like this video, share this video, and if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. With this said, this is VFXY signing off. Have a good day.